Hey guys, and welcome to today's talk on antibodies. We'll be discussing anti-nuclear antibodies as a group and anti-cytoplasmic antibodies as another group. And these are antibodies commonly found in autoimmune diseases. So today's topic is going to be a lot of discussion on autoimmune diseases and which antibodies can be found where. So starting with our anti-nuclear antibodies. These are antibodies that target anywhere inside the nucleus. So it could be DNA, it could be histones, it could be um, ribosomes attached to RNA, and we'll see lots of examples here. Let's start off with our big papa of autoimmune diseases, which is SLE, or lupus, and this really is a multi-system autoimmune disease. There's symptoms ranging from anywhere from fatigue, fever, weight loss, you can have arthritis, malar rashes all, all on your face, rain nods, uh, photosensitivity, oral ulcers, telangiectasias, and the list goes on and on and on. So you have here a antibody that attacks, in this case, a complement. So when antibody attacks complement, you have dysregulation of the immune system, the lymphocytes aren't sure what to do, and they just start going crazy and attacking everything. And really, it's a mix of two things going on, both a type 3 and a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. The type 3 is where antibody and antigen come together, and these really like to deposit in the skin, the kidney, the joints. And then we have type 2, which is where the antibody attacks directly. And this really happens with red blood cells and platelets. And that's how we get anemia and thrombocytopenia. So someone who's anemic and also predisposed to bleeding. And the tricky part about lupus is, is it's a, it's a wave-like pattern. It has stages of remission and relapse. So it's, it can be hard to pin down unless the symptoms are visible at the time when the patient comes in. So here are some of the antibodies commonly associated with lupus. We have anti-double-stranded DNA. This is a pretty good indicator. Anti-SMITH, which is another nuclear protein. So these are our classic ones, SMITH and double-stranded DNA. Then we have anti-RO and anti-LA, and as well as anti-U1 RNP. These three are ribonucleoproteins, so they're ribosomes attached to uh, RNA, and they're essentially trying to make protein, and they're inside the nucleus. And then we have our very special antihistone uh, antibody, and this is specific because antihistone antibody is associated with drug-induced lupus, and drugs that can cause lupus, we'll, we'll talk about the two classic ones, which are procainamide, which is a 1A sodium channel uh, antiarrhythmic, and then hydralazine, which is a vasodilator used in hypertensive urgency or emergency. And other drugs that are not so common but really easy uh, to remember and quite testable are isoniazid, methyl dopa, minocycline, phenytoin, and TNF alpha inhibitors. So that's lupus, and another two topics that are related to lupus here are the antiphospholipid antibodies and the anti-C1Q antibodies. So antiphospholipid antibodies are associated with antiphospholipid syndrome, commonly something that is associated with lupus, and you'll see something called anticardiolipin in this case, which is a type of antibody that affects the uh, mitochondria. And in this case, we have a dysregulation in the coagulation cascade. We have antibodies targeting antithrombin-3, protein C. So all the things that are supposed to make you not clot are being targeted and taken away. So now you're going to be predisposed to forming clots. So you'll get the formation of something called lupus anticoagulant, which is a really misnomer because it's causing clots. The reason why it's called an anticoagulant is because in the lab it breaks apart clots, but in your body it causes them. So... Uh, antiphospholipid syndrome, the classic presenting case, is a woman who has had uh, multiple miscarriages because uh, she's constantly forming clots and that can affect the placenta and the baby. Then we have anti-C1Q, which is really a correlation for disease and can be used to monitor how severe the lupus is getting over time. Moving on, let's talk about systemic sclerosis and scleroderma. Now, systemic sclerosis is an inflammatory disease, an inflammatory fibrosis, so the fibroblasts are producing too much uh, connective tissue, and this causes uh, 
particular trouble in the skin. So we have thickening and hardening of the skin. It becomes smooth, shiny, puffy. The person can even look a little bit younger because of this. It's essentially like uh, smoothing out the skin so you don't really get wrinkles. Sclerodactyly, which is when the skin of the hands becomes really tight and the fingers become hard to move. Uh, mask facies. Uh, microstomia is another facial feature, which is essentially a small and wrinkled mouth. And then a subset uh, that's important to talk about here is Crest Syndrome, which is cutaneous sclerosis that's not systemic. So this is just when the skin is affected. When you have the skin plus the lungs plus the kidneys, you have scleroderma or systemic sclerosis, and Crest is cutaneous sclerosis. So in that case, CREST is an acronym, and it stands for calcinosis, Raynaud's, esophageal dysmotility, uh, syndactyly, and telangiectasias. And these, as you'll see, is mostly limited to the uh, up outer surface of the body. Antibodies here that we look out for is anti-SCL70, which is also known as anti-topoisomerase 1, and also anti centromere. Now, if you're looking for crest, you're going to be looking for anti-centromere. This is more uh, cutaneous sclerosis. Now, if you're looking for a systemic sclerosis, you're going to look for anti-SCL70. So it's important to differentiate those there. And anti-RNA polymerase 3 is also associated with uh, crest. Really, uh, I would remember anti-centromere and anti-SCL70. Next, we're going to be talking about Sjogren's. Sjogren's is a autoimmune disease against uh, excretory glands, and particularly the salivary glands. But you have three main things that are affected. First, you're going to get dry eyes, then you're going to get dry mouth, and you're going to get a dry vagina. So dry eyes, the person will have red, irritated eyes. In the mouth, you'll likely see dental caries. And with the vagina, the main complaint is dyspareunia, or pain during sex. And here again, we have the anti-rho and anti-la ribonucleoproteins. And it's important when we get panels here to get all the uh, antibodies so that we don't accidentally mistake something like this for lupus where we would also see anti-double stranded. So that's why the panel contains multiple uh, antibodies because some of them share features as you see here, okay? And correlating factors is anti-CCP and anti-rheumatoid -rheum factor. Uh, these are present. See, you can see rheumatoid factor is also present in polymyositis, dermatomyositis and mixed connective tissue disease. Um, next, let's move on to polymyositis and dermatomyositis. These are inflammatory diseases of the muscle, and polymyositis really is affecting the proximal muscles. It's a cell-mediated uh, autoimmune disease, while dermatomyositis is affecting the proximal muscles plus the skin. And this is an antibody-mediated disease, so watch out for the pathophysiology because they're different. And also dermatomyositis often has an underlying cancer association. So for dermatomyositis, look out for the heliotrope rash on the eyelids, the cutaneous papules on the back of the hand, often there's also sclerosis on the back of the hand, so they're called mechanics hands. And um, you'll want to look out for anti jo one and for uh, polymyositis and anti-MI2 for dermatomyositis. So watch out for this because the anti-MI2 is more dermatomyositis focused. Then we have mixed cutaneous tissue disease. This disease is really a combination of lupus, systemic sclerosis, and polymyositis. So difficult to pin down, but the antibody will help us the isolated U1 RMP elevation is going to help differentiate it from any of those. So you won't see the other antibodies, just the U1 RMP. Next, let's move on to cytoplasmic antibodies, or ANCAs. So these are anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. So you'll see these in N, stands for neutrophils. You'll see these in neutrophil samples. C ANCA stands for proteinase 3 ANCA. So you can remember C and 3 kind of rhyme. And P-ANCA stands for myeloperoxidase antibody, or MPO. And how I remember that is the P reminds me of P-ANCA. Okay, so with C-ANCA, you're really thinking about one disease. It's Wegener's, or granulomatosis with polyangiitis. And in Wegener's disease, you have necrotizing formation of granulomas that are going to affect your nose, lungs, and kidneys uh, primarily. So you'll have rhinitis, pneumonia, 
renal involvement, glomerulonephritis. And the treatment here is really steroids with a combination of either methotrexate, rituximab, or cyclophosphamide to help combat the autoimmune portion of the disease. And next we have PNCA. So PNCA, you have two choices here, not just one. You have microscopic polyangiitis, which is a small vessel disease, which in contrast to Wegener's, it's a medial, medium plus small vessel disease. And then we have Church strauss which is associated with eosinophilia. So for microscopic polyangiitis, we have uh, gran no granulomas forming, so that's important to know. And we have really glomerulonephritis and pulmonary vasculitis as our two major factors because it's a small vessel disease. And the small vessel disease, uh, the small vessels in the lungs and the kidneys are going to be your primary target. Then in Church strauss we have uh, necrotizing granulomas, just like in Wagner's, but we have additionally eosinophilia. And you'll see classic associations with asthma, sinusitis, and palpable purpura because these antibody antigen complexes are uh, clumping up inside the skin. Well, finally, we have um, atypical pianca. So sometimes they won't mention the atypical part, they just call it pianca. But just to be specific, we have atypical pianca, which is associated with PSC. PSC stands for primary sclerosing cholangitis. This is a uh, IBD or irritable bowel disease associated condition where you have sclerosing of both the intra and extra hepatic uh, bile ducts and you get cholestasis so you get things like jaundice and hepatic inflammation from this disease and you'll see here it's classically also associated with ulcerative colitis so watch out for PNCA with PSC. So I hope this has been a good review for you of the different antibodies in autoimmune diseases. You guys can keep these tables for reference and I'll see you guys in the next video.